How was everyone's coffee break? Good? Yay, you're feeling a little more caffeinated, a little pumped up. We have some great presentations for you. Uh, in the next segment, we're starting with uh, Camille Adamczyk. Really interesting presentation. Camille Adamczyk is the CEO of Intel Clinic, the startup that raised $440,000 on Kickstarter for the creation of the Neuro On, the world's first polyphasic sleep mask. Camille is a student of medicine as well as the founder and president of the Students Neurological Society at the Medical University of Warsaw. His passions include cognitive neuroscience and synthetic emotions. Please welcome to the stage Camille, who will be speaking today about UX in crowdfunding projects. Thank you. Hello. Could you hear me well? Okay, uh, my name is Kamila Damczyk. Uh, Mm, I'm the CEO of uh, Intel Clinic, uh, the company which created Neuron, a smart sleep mask. Today I'm going to tell you something about our experience with user experience in crowdfunding campaign. I'm not a uh, user experience uh, specialist, but uh, I would like to um, share with you my knowledge I gained about uh, the special field, which is a uh, crowdfunding market, uh, which is totally different than uh, normal market with uh, uh, normal pro product placement. Uh, I have a question for you. Uh, how many of you uh, heard about our uh, smart sleep mask, Neuron? Okay. Um, for those who... Uh, haven't heard about us before. Um, I would like to introduce uh, you our our product, uh, using which we enter Kickstarter campaign. Uh, this is a smart sleep mask, um, which tracks your brain waves, eye movement, and muscle tension, and on that basis, uh, create a unique sleep schedule for you and works as a uh, sleep sleep guide, sleep trainer for you. Um, we found a problem that nowadays people don't have enough time for themselves, for uh, their work, for their, for their free time, and uh, desperately looking for uh, some ways using which they could increase uh, their amount of time. Uh, I had been in the same situation. Uh, I am a medical student. I've been, more, I've been running a couple of projects, working for a full-time job. And one day, one day uh, I, I found that I have no free time. Um, I've started searching through the web um, in idea how I could enlarge my number of the day, uh, number of hours during my day. And I found the idea of polyphasic sleep. My co-founders uh, at that time were students of uh, University of Technology we decided to combine our knowledge, my medical and uh, their technical uh, engineering knowledge, and create a device uh, which transmits medical knowledge from medical devices and create a mass market uh, device which could allow you to track your sleep and give a real important feedback how to optimize it. Uh, with Neuron, we won the first prize for the best startup in Europe uh, in Paris uh, a few months ago. And uh, why I'm here and why I'm going to tell you something about user experience in crowdfunding, uh, one I, why I think that uh, I have something to tell you in this matter is because we raised almost half a million uh, dollars uh, in our first crowdfunding campaign running on Kickstarter uh, with Neuron. Uh, it was like a huge experience for us. It, uh, it changed the way we look at Kickstarter campaign, at crowdfunding campaign, and on our campaign as well. Uh, because of uh, Kickstarter, we pivoted our uh, idea, and I'm going to tell you why it happened. So, to start with, 
you, you need to know that crowdfunding campaign is something like a, a political campaign. Uh, it's the same like a president election or, or something. Uh, we need to be really transparent for our backers uh, in order to gain their trust for us. We are not a developed company. Um, they couldn't check the information about our experience, about ourselves. In, in our case, uh, we were a company abroad in the United States. Uh, even if, if we had a, uh, an office in San Francisco, it was our second office. The main team um, was located in Poland, which is at the end of the world for the, um, for the Americans. So we wanted to be as transparent uh, as, we, as, we, uh, as we could uh, in order to show, our, show those people that um, we are trustworthy. Um, because there is no other way to convince them that what you're doing, you're doing right and uh, you have experience about it. Glo global crowdfunding uh, market is still growing, growing really rapidly. Uh, the biggest market is of course in the United States. It's uh, growing as well uh, in Europe, also because of legislation changes. A um, few years ago, uh, Kickstarter uh, allowed uh, projects from, from Europe, uh, from uh, the United Kingdom, um, to run their campaign. Right now, it's also allowed in uh, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. But this crowdfunding uh, movement changing not only the startup world, uh, or small, com small company world, but it's also changing the whole economy and even uh, legislation. Because of crowdfunding market, the whole uh, legislation about uh, fundraising and uh, financing uh, companies was changed in the United States last year. And you need to remember that crowdfunding is not only the Kickstarter, or Indiegogo. Uh, crowdfunding is the way we gather the money. It's not the single platform. Uh, apart from Kickstarter or Indiegogo, uh, we have dozens of others which help us uh, raising money for different approaches. For example, medical, because um, we can't run strictly medical projects uh, on Kickstarter. So there are, there are different ways uh, we could gather those money. We could let know uh, the world that we have a great idea. And a great case is a uh, case of uh, Luckytron. Uh, those guys um, applied for the Kickstarter campaign. There is a procedure during which the Kickstarter uh, needs to approve that your, your, company, your project um, your project could be uh, running on Kickstarter and in f fulfilling their gu guidelines. And they rejected uh, Lockitron um, projects, Lockitron cases, uh, by, but they didn't give up uh, and they decided to create their own crowdfunding campaign on their web page. And they gathered over $2 million via their web page. Um, so as we can see, um, there's something changing in people's behavior because there was no guarantee that those guys give anything back uh, for those money because from, um, from low point of view, uh, there is we don't need to give you anything if you backed us at the crowdfunding project. So it's your risk uh, that you give, give you my money and you need to trust me that for this money you will receive uh, what I promised. So like our behavior changing a lot and then people uh, believe that there are like great projects in the world and uh, they need their support in order to create something amazing. 
But because of uh, this kind of behaviors, this trust, uh, there are people who want to cheat us. And uh, because of the space of val violation, uh, trying to create project um, which doesn't exist. So it was the case of Lucy, uh, a Canadian project uh, at the Kickstarter. Um, they ran those projects, and at the end of the campaign, um, people realized that this project doesn't exist at all. Uh, so fortunately, those guys didn't receive the, those money because Kickstarter abandoned this project. But uh, you need to be aware that there is a danger that you won't ever you won't ever receive your money and the project you're looking for. So there are two ways people could communicate with us during the Kickstarter campaign. There is a comment session section and update section. Those two are really important because they're a channel of communication between uh, founders and our bakers. During those channels, we are communicating that our, company, our campaign is alive and uh, that we hear the people's voice. Because what I want to tell you is that it's totally different than running a normal company and, and normal project. Because normally we are creating the project on our own, in silence, apart from media, uh, until we are ready to show something to the people. In crowdfunding Kickstarter campaign, we need to show ourselves before we are ready for it. And we need to give the space for the people to change our project. We have a huge audience, huge beta testers group, and we need to trust them that they really know what, what they're looking for. And they're really committed because they gave us their money. So uh, they're really trusting us, and they also want to create something amazing. And they want us to work together with them in order to create, create uh, amazing devices. I would like to tell you something more about our mistakes during the Kisser campaign, because we didn't do everything right. Uh, we are aware of it, and uh, the, the, the success of the campaign was so huge uh, that we didn't expect it. Uh, at that time, we had a really small team, and we really uh, hadn't any time for the interaction. We were trying to uh, communica communicate with our bakers um, really fast and communicate each changes uh, we've been uh, ma making in, uh, in our Kickstarter campaign, Kickstarter project. But I've been reaching ar around uh, three, 400 uh, mails per day. And it was really too much for me, for my team, uh, to have a clear channel of communication. So it is really important that you clearly communicate with people uh, who trust you, uh, that you're doing well, and that you're uh, listening to their feedback, that you're uh, approaching their, uh, their advices. Because uh, in the middle of the Kickstarter campaign, there was a... Um, huge movement around our Kickstarter bakers uh, that we are not listening to them. It wasn't, it wasn't a true because simply we hadn't a resources to communicate with them. It was our mistake, but we've been listening to them uh, and we realize that you need to have really, really uh, huge and strong communication team when you want to run a Kickstarter campaign. This slide is uh, really important. Uh, it shows how project deals with shipping, uh, with their commitment. Uh, 
it shows that those projects are mainly early stage projects. And those people who's running those companies are uh, at the beginning of their business path. They're not experienced and uh, they had no experience uh, telling the people when they're going to ship it because they didn't expect some complications. And from the other side, this slide shows that you're dealing with completely different markets, a uh, completely different group of people. And because of that, uh, a lot of people think that if I, for example, gather uh, $2 million from the Kickstarter campaign, uh, I'm the god, I, uh, I won the market, and there is like a clear path for the mass market and everyone buys my product. And because, but it's not that true. This market is totally different. This is early adopters and evangelist market. Those people could forgive you much more than a normal market uh, just because they believe in you and they are committed to give you their time, their feedback, a really precious time, uh, in order for you to create really amazing product. And mass market uh, doesn't act like that. In the mass market, if you make any, any, any of those mistakes we made before doing Kickstarter campaign, uh, we would have a huge problem. So from one side, these Kickstarter campaigns are really amazing because you have an insight to the market. You could understand if the market demands uh, what you're trying to create. But from the other side, there is a danger um, that we will believe in our project too much. And uh, on base, basing on this kind of market, which is, which is totally different than a normal one, we will create uh, a, mass, a mass market device. And because of that, there, there, there are a lot of failures in, in Kickstarter projects, so we need to be aware of it. Thank you very much.